All right, now we just want to finish up these forms and talk about a few of the properties and how they behave. So we're going to look at this in specifics. We're going to look at this method equals git. So I'm going to leave this set to git for now, and I'll switch back to my web form and refresh the browser here. And I'm just going to fill it out. So I'll just say name Andrew, state, description, and we'll choose a file here. I'll just select this file we've been working on and subscribe password one two three four five six zip code five 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 notice i can't do anymore okay so i fill out the form and i'm ready to hit submit so let's press submit and you can see that once i click submit all of that form data is actually appended in the url so all that data is up here notice it says client name equals andrew and then there's this and sign gender equals male and sign state equals arizona and sign description equals so there's a few important things we want to note from this data first is where did these names come from client name gender these come directly from the name attribute of the form so whatever it says name equals gender the data that gets sent will be exactly what i typed in gender notice this one says client name in camel casing that's because it says name equals client name. Okay, the value that gets submitted or the part after the equals sign is whatever the user typed in the form. Okay, so that's the this is called a variable and this is called the value. And all that data is submitted in the form that way. One particular note of interest is this one right here. It says state equals az. But I selected from the drop down, I selected Arizona. So why doesn't it say state equals Arizona? Well that's because the thing that gets submitted is the value and even though the label says Arizona the value says AZ so whatever you punch in right here is actually going to be submitted when the user selects that particular option so pay attention to that if you want the word Arizona submitted also you need to have the word Arizona in the value portion and the other thing to note in here if let's scroll over a little bit there's the file right there the index.html and if we scroll over, there's the password. Notice it's just one, two, three, four, five, six. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's not submitted encrypted or anything like that. It's just regular old plain text. But all of the data is stuck up here in the URL. The reason why it's up there is because this method is set to get. Okay. So I'm going to change this to post this time. And I'm going to go back and refresh here. And let's say name equals Andrew. I'll just kind of click this really fast. Punch in some data here. And we'll subscribe. And this time let's hit submit. So, whoops, actually I need to refresh that first, sorry. I didn't refresh the page to show you actually how that works. So, there we go. So I'm working with a blank page now. I had all that data up there still previously. So let's type this out again. And click Submit. And notice it sent the data. This time it didn't stick it up in the URL. And that's the main difference between post and get, is post submits the data behind the scenes, where get submits the data up in the URL. Other than that, they do the exact same thing. They both submit the data to the final location. If you don't understand the difference between post and get, a really simple example that I can give you, other than getting into quite a bit of programming um, terminology and history on why post or get, is this simple example right here. So I'm going to go to google.com, which is really nothing more than a web page with a, a form on it. It has one input field. I type something in and hit submit. So I'll just type in Andrew here and Google for Andrew. And if I click search right here in Google's search bar, Notice that all of that data is submitted up in the URL. So that should tell you one thing, that, that Google is submitting this form via Git. And notice that this says up here, Q equals Andrew. That's just what I typed in. So Q stands for query equals Andrew. So I queried Google for the keyword Andrew. Now the reason they have all the data up here in the URL is because this allows me to maybe bookmark this page where I can copy this and send this link to my friend and all he has to do is just click on the link and it'll take him exactly to these same results. Whereas if, if they used post, 
and I Googled for Andrew dot if and I Googled for Andrew, it would still give me the results, but my URL would just say google.com because none of that data would be up here in the URL. So I wouldn't be able to bookmark it or come back to these same set of results. So that's maybe a simple example of when Git and Post are helpful. So that concludes the section on HTML forms. As you can see, there's quite a bit to them. They get a little bit messy. There's lots of properties and attributes and values, um, but they're very powerful and they're the method of exchanging data across the web.